In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down five different side hustles that I've tried over the past year. I'm going to talk about the positives, the negatives, and if I think each of these hustles is worth the time. This video is brought to you by Course Careers. Shout out to them for supporting the channel. Let's get into the video. Okay, so hustle number one is helium mining. Now, if you don't know what this is, let me explain. Basically, you buy this little mini computer. Mine's made by a company called SenseCap, but there are other brands, and you can get these for like 100, 200 bucks now. I unfortunately bought mine during the worst time when there was a ton of hype around these things, so I paid 800. Yeah, not good. But you connect your device to an antenna, and then it just sits in your house on a shelf and connects to other devices in your area, which as a result, earns you a cryptocurrency called HNT. The first week I earned almost seven bucks, which isn't terrible, but then I read from the experts that if you upgrade your antenna, you can earn a lot more faster. Some people were reporting that they were earning three to four times what they were getting with their stock antenna after they upgraded. So I bought a $70 one on Amazon and waited for it to come in. Once I unboxed the antenna, I connected it to my miner, attached it to my wall next to this window, and for the next week and a half, I let it do its thing. I ended up earning about $16 in 12 days, so a slight increase in per day earnings compared to the first week. Eventually though, I decided to go all out and really see how much I could earn with this hustle. Everyone online was telling me that I needed to get my antenna out outside on my roof or a pole or something. So I did just that. I bought some PVC at Home Depot and attached it to the antenna, which I then attached to my deck. The antenna now had pretty much nothing in the way of it and could send and receive without as much interference. I also took this time to upgrade my cables and connected my hotspot directly to my modem with an ethernet cable instead of Wi-Fi. I wanted to give this passive income hustle the best chance possible. Unfortunately, I tested this setup and also a different mount for a while and really didn't earn that much more per day. I know that certain areas are better than others for healing mining, all I can report on is my experience. When I started this side hustle, h and was around $25 per token. Now it's under two. So things on that front aren't going so hot either. I still have my miner and it's still plugged in and doing its thing. And to date, I've earned 16.37 HNT, which today is only worth about 22 bucks. If h and was at its peak again, this would be worth around 860 bucks and I'd be closing in on profitability since I probably spent around $900 total on the miner and upgrades. So do I recommend helium mining? Not really. I mean, if you enjoy the helium project, Project and think long term it has potential to be a lot bigger than it currently is, then sure, go for it. But it's risky and there are definitely no guarantees that we're going to see the price above $2 again. I'm going to give each of these hustles a score out of 10. So for helium mining, I give it a 3 out of 10. It's fun, but very risky. All right, so I know we're talking a lot about side hustles here, but one of the fastest ways to grow your income is to get a job in tech. And if you want to start a high paying career in the technology industry, but maybe don't have previous experience or a degree, then Course Careers is here to help. They're replacing college as the modern way people are starting careers. And it's so simple. All you do is go through an affordable online course where you learn everything required to actually do the job. Then they help you land a position by partnering with companies that drop their degree and experience requirements to hire course career graduates into entry-level positions and internships. Check out some of their stories of people like Nyla who went from being a 19-year-old Starbucks barista to making over 60K in a remote technology sales career. Or Ben who went from being a college dropout working as a middle school janitor to making 80K as a tech sales rep working fully remote. Guys, go to coursecareers.com, link is below, to sign up for their free introduction course, where you'll learn exactly how you can start a high-paying technology career without a degree or previous experience. And remember to use code STEVIE50 for $50 off their full course. Now back to the video. All right, side hustle number two I tried is sneaker flipping. Basically what you do is either go to the Nike outlet store or some other discount retailer and look for shoes that sell for more online. The first time I did this was a bit of a learning experience. I figured out at the Nike outlet store that the best deals are typically on the back wall in the ultra clearance section. I ended up finding these Nike challengers for 40 bucks and there were three pairs. On eBay, these at the time were selling for 75 bucks, which would give you a profit of around $15 per pair. Not super impressive. So I kept looking and found these Space Hippie 04s for 50 bucks and on eBay, eBay, they went for 85, resulting in another $15 profit. Again, not huge money, but they'd sell quick and money is money. As I was leaving though, I found these free run 5.0s for 50 bucks and on eBay, they were selling for over $100. After fees and shipping at the time, you would have profited around $25 per pair and there were probably 20 pairs there. So you do the math. Of course, some sizes are gonna sell a lot quicker than others, but even if you just bought 10 pairs in the most popular sizes and made just $25 a pair, that's 250 bucks, which in my opinion is worth it. I also went to the 
Nike store again more recently to look for more profitable shoes, and at first I wasn't finding much at all. I found these Wild Horse 7s for 48 bucks after a 20% off sale they were running, and on eBay they go for 80, which gives you about a $10 profit. I then found these boots too that would have given me a $25 profit, but they only had one pair, and it just wasn't the best size. I think they would have sold, it just would have taken more time than I wanted. Again though, I was just about to leave and I ran into these Pegasus Air Olaloos, which were 36 bucks after the 20% off deal, and on eBay they consistently go for 80 to 120. I ended up buying three pairs and sold them all within a week and a half, giving me a profit of around 120 bucks. So do I think sneaker flipping is a solid side hustle? Yes, but there's definitely a learning curve. You have to know what to look for, when the best time to go to the outlet store is, like when do they restock, you have to know which shoes are worth holding long term, versus doing a quick flip on. Yeah, I mean there's plenty of people out there doing this full time, so that means a lot of competition too, but it's definitely fun. I'll continue to do it as a hobby because I love shoes. Overall, I'd recommend giving it a try. So sneaker flipping, I'll go 7 out of 10 just because the margins are thinner and there is a bit of a learning curve. The third side hustle I tried is Amazon affiliate marketing. With this you sign up as an Amazon associate and then promote products that you can buy on Amazon. For every sale that you generate through your custom link, you make a commission that ranges anywhere from 1 to 20%. Now I wanted to give this business concept the best possible chance of succeeding, so I actually decided to use several large Facebook pages that I own to promote my links to. These pages have a mostly middle aged female audience that's based in the United States, so I thought that they'd be perfect for this. I then found a bunch of products that I knew would resonate well with this audience and had potential to go viral. like this this flamingo bottle holder. After that I created individual affiliate links for every product that I was going to sell, organized them in a spreadsheet, and then photoshopped some meme style images for them. I think that an image like this has a lot more potential to get more shares and likes on it than if I were to just post an image of the product with a link. They just look a little less like a spammy ad and fit better into a social media feed. Lastly I scheduled all the posts and spread them out across seven days and here's how our results turned out. Now I have to preface this by saying that unfortunately when people click my links on the posts, it opened up Amazon in the Facebook Facebook web browser instead of the Amazon app, meaning the user had to sign into Amazon and go through more hoops than I was hoping to make a purchase. If the links just opened in the Amazon app, the customer would just have to click buy now. That's it, which is a lot easier to convert with. Regardless, we did make some decent sales. We generated over 6,000 clicks and 66 ordered items with a 1% conversion rate. Our total revenue generated was over $1,000 and our affiliate income or what I got to take home was 54 bucks. The best part about this side hustle is that once it was set up and the post were scheduled, I didn't have to do anything else. It was truly passive at that point. The bad part is that these commission percentages are just so small. Other affiliate programs offer 15% or higher, which would have given me a profit of $150 on my $1,000 in revenue instead. Affiliate marketing can absolutely work. I know plenty of people that do it for a living, but I think the most important part of it is building a niche audience first that you can then market products to. It's very difficult to get started with this if you have no audience. So Amazon affiliate marketing, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. If you have a way to reach a ton of people online, Online. It can absolutely be a game changer that can also be scaled, but otherwise I think there are better options. All right, hustle number four is thrift store flipping. Now, if you guys have watched some of my more recent videos, you know that I've been going really hard at the thrift store. I'm always shocked at what you can find there. One of the first times I went this past year, I found a bread maker that could be sold for a $20 profit. I found this NFL showdown board game that would have given you a $10 profit, some Levi jeans that would give you another $20 profit, and then this in the box Keurig view for $44.99, which at the time was selling for over $150 on eBay, giving you a $70 profit. And this didn't take me too long either. I was looking around for maybe 20 minutes. Again, this is a side hustle where you have to research and know what to look for. But once you nail that, there's a lot of upside. And what I love about it is that it's practical. You buy it based on recent sold comps on eBay and you flip it. It's simple business. If you know what you're doing, it's super low risk compared to most other businesses. Another time I went later in the year, I limited myself to the amount of cash in my wallet, which was $21 and ended up turning that into a hundred in profit. I found a Mickey Mouse mug for $2, which sells for 20 on eBay, giving a $12 profit. I then went by the golf clubs, which are some of my favorite items to flip all time and found these two tailor-made R9 woods for $7 each, which both sell for $50 each plus shipping on eBay. These would each give you a $40 profit. I then went to the toy section and found this vintage rock and roll Ernie plush for four bucks that sells for 18 to 19 plus shipping, giving us a $16 profit. What you're looking for are desirable brands and also stuff that's uncommon these days due to age or some other reason. Thrift store flipping is a hustle that I enjoy doing. I try and go at least once a month and check out what my local shop has available. Overall, highly recommend 9 out of 10 only because again there is a learning curve but it's definitely beginner friendly and a lot of fun. 
The last side hustle that we're gonna talk about in this video is print on demand. If you don't know what this is, here's a quick rundown. You create t-shirt designs, sweatshirt designs, phone case designs, bag designs, and sell them online using a platform like Printful, Printify, or Gelato. What happens is when you get an order on your website, they do all the fulfillment for you. They print your design on a shirt or other product that they have in their warehouse, and then ship it off to your customer. The nice part about this is that you don't have to hold any inventory or deal with all the shipping and handling of your products. And trust me, shipping and running a warehouse is a lot of work. And they're done that. So when I tried this, I started a faith and inspiration based clothing brand that I could again promote with my large Facebook pages I own. The same ones we talked about earlier that have a US middle aged female demographic. I made a separate page for my new brand, which I gave the name Sunsets and Faith, and then started sharing content to it and growing the audience so that I had some social proof built up. I then created some simple shirt designs and created mock ups of the shirts using a website called Place It, which is actually really cool. Definitely recommend it if you're getting into this. After that, I built a basic web website and started promoting my new brand with my Facebook audiences. The first week I had almost 3,000 store sessions and did a total of almost $300 in sales, which doesn't sound too bad, but our conversion rate was horrible at 0.26%. This means that maybe we weren't targeting the right people, our prices were too high, or our website just wasn't optimized to convert. So I decided to change a couple things. I switched my print on demand fulfillment to Printify because they offered slightly better pricing, which allowed me to lower my prices on my website for my customers. I also set up a $100 budget for Facebook ads that would allow me to target more specific groups of people that might be interested in clothing like this. After this change, we ended up having far fewer store sessions and our sales ended up being around 240 for the second week. Not bad, but I spent 100 bucks on ads and our conversion rate, while it did improve, was still only 0.52%. I think print on demand is another one of those side hustles where if you have the groundwork done, aka a niche audience built, or great creative assets and designs, it can definitely work. I don't think it's the most beginner friendly side hustle simply because it can be difficult to come up with designs that actually will sell. But it is amazing to me that you can offer a thousand different t-shirts on your website and not have to stock any of them yourself. Like that is really cool. If you can come up with great designs, I think it's absolutely a viable business concept and there are plenty of people out there killing it with this. I'll give it a seven out of 10. It's not as easy to get into as flipping stuff from thrift stores, but it can be scaled a lot further. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Huge shout out again to Course Careers for sponsoring this one. Let me know what side hustles you want me to try next. I'm always down to give something new a chance. But yeah, till next time, subscribe to Stevie Sells for more. Peace.